All right. Uh, so, John McCain, this is big news. I mean, John McCain is supporting this uh, tax plan. And he was one of the big holdouts. They were writing articles saying he might be the vote to kill it, just like he killed the health care uh, repeal. But this would really be and we know this is good because The New York Times, a former newspaper, is going insane. I mean, if you read the paper, it's it is hilarious. I mean, we showed that guy's head exploding, but that doesn't even describe I, they're, they're, Here's their op ed from the editorial. It's called. The Senate is rushing to pass its tax bill because it stinks. <laughs> like, like, don't you know, don't pull any punches. It, they, they have absolutely no nuance, nothing. And the reason is, I think, that this tax bill basically reverses the socialist premise that has been put in place, not just during Obama. It really was all the years before that your money belongs to them. Remember in that old video game, all your all your outposts belong to us, are belong to us, all your money are belong to them. And this does reverse that. And Guys, I will tell you, a lot of people who are listening, I know, did not live through the Carter to, tr to Reagan transition, and I did. And during the Carter years, you had to wait on line for gas, and I'm talking about hour-long lines to get gas. Everybody was depressed. There was all kinds of—you walk down the street, and people had these long faces. The neighborhood I lived in, I remember men and women getting in fights in the street, people screaming in the night. It wasn't a great neighborhood, you know, but you couldn't be in a great neighborhood because there were no jobs. Everybody was unemployed. Inflation was terrible. And then Reagan came in, and it was the same thing. The New York Times and all the papers and everybody was telling us what a dope this guy was, what a dope. Cut taxes, major tax cut. The— the economy skyrocketed. I, I may have this wrong, but I think it was like something like 8% GDP. We're now at 3.3% uh, GDP growth. It was the people that helped, single women and black people. That was the biggest, those were the biggest benefactors. But the whole country turned around. I mean, and people talk about Reagan's charm and his ease and all his humor, but none of that would have mattered if the country hadn't turned around the way it did. It was, it was really, it was like laughing gas. Donald Trump, who was doing some amazing things, he did something yesterday that he did go out and he made a speech. I, where did he make the speech? Was it St. Louis? I can't remember where he made the speech yesterday. He, he's promoting, I think it was in Missouri, he, he was promoting uh, the tax bill. And he, when he is on his game, he is absolutely hilarious. Here he is promoting the tax bill, saying it's going to be bad for the rich, because this is the only Democrat talking point. It's just going to help the rich. That was the other New York Times headline. You know, as a bill increasingly helps the rich. So here's Trump saying it won't help the rich. This is cut number two. We're also going to eliminate tax breaks and complex loopholes taken advantage of by the wealthy. Who are they? I don't know. I think my accountants are going crazy right now. <laughs> It's all right. Hey, look, I'm president. I don't care. I don't care anymore. I don't care. Some of my wealthy friends care. Me, I don't care. I, this is a higher calling. Do we agree? As Hillary said, what difference does it make? It made a, made, it made a big difference. Made a big, big difference. This, this is, I mean, he's hilarious when he's like this. This is when he is absolutely great. The U.S. economy, this is from the Wall Street Journal this morning, the U.S. economy is running at its full potential for the first time in a decade, a new milestone for an expansion now in its ninth year. Total economic output in the third quarter was slightly above the maximum sustainable level of output as estimated by the Congressional Budget Office. So things are going really well with all the all the things that are happening and all the panic and CNN fall CNN is boycotting the Christmas party I love the CNN is boycotting the White House Christmas party so we they won't all the people who are there won't get to enjoy Don Lemon walking into a corner and having to f have assistance finding his way out they'll just have to settle for celebrating the birth of Christ it's going to be tough <laughs> you know, it's going to be tough without CNN there anyway if if Trump succeeds with this and it does what I hope it will do to the economy so many good things could come out of it. You know, nobody knows the future. We're all collect, connect, connecting the dots. It's like connecting the dots to make constellations. You know, this, there are a million gazillion stars in the sky. You collect them, you see a Big Dipper. If you connect them in a different way, you see something else. You know, that's the way the future is. If you decide to connect the dots to a good future, 
a booming economy will mean a, a Republican replacement, will mean another Trump term, and then a Republican after that. So we could have President Mike Pence. We could even have President Ted Cruz, depending on things, how things go, which would be amazing, I hate to have to say. The destruction of political correctness, even though, you know, maybe it, maybe it took a guy like Trump, maybe it took a bull to walk into that particular China shop and shatter that particular China. But once it is gone, a guy, an elegant, you know, uh, restrained guy like uh, Pence, could really do a lot with political correctness going on. I think it'll be good for the arts. I think it'll be good for everything.